Let New York City burn. He cut the NYPD's budget by $1 billion. He supported a police reform bill that tied the hands of police with no training under these new restrictions, and he ordered stand downs while crimes occurred across the city. But then again, he's always had a problem with the police. I said it three years ago. De Blasio's anti-cop sentiments are deep-rooted. In 2014, when two cops were assaulted and seriously injured on the Brooklyn Bridge's protesters chanted, what do we want? Dead cops? When do we want them? Now? He called the protesters throwing garbage cans and bottles at police. Peaceful protesters. He normalized police hatred, telling us that he told his son to be cautious of police. Now, as New York City devolves into chaos, de Blasio turns a blind eye. Macy's flagship store in Herald Square was looted by criminals, not protesters, criminals, breaking in with hammers and coming out with stolen goods. Arsonists and looters on Fifth Avenue hit and emptied Chanel, Gucci, Balmain. The universal question, where were the police? Where are the arrests? Where are the perp walks? I'll tell you. The police were given a stand down to not engage and a minimal number of cops were deployed. The upshot, as cops stand down, Criminals become emboldened. And as for you, taxes will clearly go up, not just for the cleanup, but because businesses can no longer afford, nor would they necessarily want to be in a city where they are not protected from crime. In fact, one high-end New York City store is suing for failing to stop the looting. The owner of that store says that after paying taxes, the city owed a duty to the stores to protect them. He says that the city had intelligence, but did nothing about it. He, like many New Yorkers, believes his taxes go to the NYPD and that the police were told to stand down. But the big stores were not the only stores. Looters stormed small businesses, many minority owned. Many shuttered now for good because of the protesters. Now, since George Floyd's death, more than 700 police officers have retired from the NYPD, and the department is now limiting the number of how many can retire each week. Why? The police have a target on their backs, and they know it. They're being told to stand down, and they're not being given any guidance on the new law passed by the city council. I actually told you about a hero two weeks ago. A deputy inspector and precinct commander, ironically from the 46th precinct, known as the Alamo, who retired because he was not given any guidance as to how his officers should respond in light of the new limitations on their ability to arrest. The irony here is rich. The 46th precinct that he left, known as the Alamo, was dubbed in the 1980s as the most dangerous square mile in America. And the new rules restrict police actions regarding arrests and what part of a defendant's body they're allowed to touch. Picture this. 35,000 New York City police officers, each with a gun, not one. Not one has been trained on how to effectuate an arrest under the new guidelines where you can and cannot touch the perp and police will face certain prosecution if the arrest is not made properly. De Blasio also disbanded the anti-crime undercover unit which directs undercovers to areas where crime occurs pursuant to a ComStat which is a colorblind pinpoint screen that identifies crime concentrations that help drive down the city's crime rate and literally revolutionize policing around the world. Now, no more stop, question, frisk. No more police concentration in those crime-ridden areas. And the ones most afraid? The minority community in the inner cities who live with crime day and night. You ask the black and Hispanic clergy, 
They are <coughs> terrified of what is to come. The cops that were protecting them are gone. They've been told to stand down. They can't engage. They can't touch suspects. And I've been told repeatedly now by NYPD cops that if a suspect resists, the cops will let them go because they haven't been trained on what to do in that circumstance. The rookie school has been canceled. Morale is down. And for many, the exit from the NYPD cannot come soon enough. But it gets even worse. Democrat de Blasio and his ilk are working together to defeat law enforcement totally. Democrat Governor Andrew Cuomo, you remember him, the one who forced nursing homes to take corona-infected patients, thus leading to the deaths of the highest number of seniors in the country. He signs a bill giving everyone involved immunity. He's pushed for cash bail a so-called bail reform, as a result of which most defendants are released as soon as the paperwork is done. Add New York City Democrat District Attorney Cy Vance to this trifecta. Vance pushed for all crime to have no cash bail. And in an inter-office memo, he instructed his assistant DAs to go soft or dismiss cases against protesters and instead told his prosecutors to be proactive and build cases against the cops who arrested the protesters. These three Democrats create a recipe for a return of New York City to the crime-ridden 80s when the headlines looked like this. This one from this week doesn't look so different, does it? Consider this. For 40 years, New York City education and social services budget was more than half of the total city budget. The NYPD, previously at 8%, is now 5%. The correlation of defunding police and the increase in homicides is predictable. In fact, already homicides have skyrocketed. There is a 206% increase in shooting victims last week over the same week last year and if you're not angry enough take a listen to this this is a historic moment of change we have to respect that but also say to people the the kinds of gatherings we're used to the the parades the fairs we just can't have that while we're focusing on health right now okay but de blasio exempted Black Lives Matter marches. He says they can continue despite the ban he put on all large events because, quote, this is a historic moment of change. Say what? Are you stupid? The rest of us can't work. We can't enjoy sports. We can't be with our friends because of coronavirus. But anyone marching for Black Lives Matter can protest in hordes? Is that because the virus won't affect them? I thought the black community was particularly vulnerable to the coronavirus. And what about all you guilt bullies? The ones who told us that if we go out that we're gonna infect grandma. So is it okay for protesters to get grandma sick but the rest of us can't? So Bill, You've decided to take away my safety, my protection, my security, my business, and my liberty. I've got news for you. You don't have that right. You took an oath to support the Constitution. And as a public official, the first order of government is the protection of its citizens. You don't have the right to tell the police to stand down and to violate the oath that they took. You don't have the right to tell cops who want to go out to protect and defend us that they're not allowed to exercise their authority. And I don't care what your Marxist, leftist, socialist comrades tell you. This is the United States of America. And in the United States of America, we outlaw crime. And we pay police to support law and order. You, Mr. de Blasio, by not supporting law and order are a menace to law-abiding, tax-paying residents of New York City. You are so out of sync with the rest of us and so far from the fundamental values upon which this country was founded that the best thing that can happen to you is that you be impeached and crawl back into your Marxist, leftist, socialist hole.
Wow. This is one week after us celebrating our Independence Fourth of July weekend that was last weekend. This is one week after. Wow. If all these things is true, this man should be charged with treason. If he's done what she's saying that he's done. But once more, the people in this area, they didn't want to support peace. They didn't want to support utopia and love. They didn't want to back <coughs> the windmill ministries. And because of it, I was vulnerable towards every Tom, Dick, and Harry that come at me towards trying to promote me as this or promote me as that. Once more, the windmill ministries did not fail the people. It was the people that failed the windmill ministries. This is probably one of the most saddest days of my 59 years. A day after, a week after our celebrations on the 4th of July to hear what's going on in New York City. And I'm sure, no I ain't sure, I know that the same type of activities is going on in other metro, major metropolitan areas just like the mayor of Atlanta having to call out a thousand National Guard Army troops to protect the streets. It has reached a level of more than just gross negligence. It has reached a level of terrorism within our own country right here in our own backyard. So sad. And that's my open. Let me know what you think on my Facebook and Twitter. Hashtag Judge Shanine. And don't forget, if you like my opens, you're going to love my new book, Don't Lie to Me. It's in stores in September, but you can pre-order it now. In the book, I say we had enough lies from the left who are trying to destroy us. Take a listen to what it says. Pre-order your copy today. And joining me now to discuss my open and more, Fox News contributor Dan Bongino. Uh, good evening, Dan. Uh, did you ever think uh, after you left the NYPD that we'd get to the point we're at now? Judge, this is really, really sad to watch. I mean, listen, I live in Florida now. I've lived in Maryland, but I, but I grew up and was raised in New York City. And, and watching this happen, I have friends. My mother lives up there. My two brothers live up there. Uh, one of my best friends lives up there. He just retired. He was a second grade detective with the NYPD. He just left. To watch America's, you know, formerly biggest, safest big city just collapse into shambles and chaos in just a few years is really gut-wrenching. I mean, it's really hard to watch. And that it happened because of tangible, touchable, material decisions by this complete buffoon, de Blasio, and his brigade of buffoons around him in the city council is disturbing, Judge. I mean, I I've said this now three times on the network, and I'll say it again on your show, and I want everyone to listen. If you were trying to destroy New York City, intentionally trying, like Dark Knight Gotham Bane style or something. Would you do anything different than de Blasio is doing now? And the answer is, hell no, you wouldn't. You would do exactly what de Blasio is doing. It's almost as if this guy is a royalist or something. It's a terrorist. Well, let's talk about the fact that this week he painted a, uh, a mural on the street, Black Lives Matter, in front of Trump Tower uh, on, on, uh, uh, on Fifth Avenue. And, you know, this is how he spends his time. And there's nothing that the business people can do in that area. I mean, he is destroying the businesses as well, in addition to crime. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering if he if he uh, painted, you know, what do we want, dead cops? When do we want them now? Uh, right next to it, he met, he must have forgotten that little chant. Uh, that was in New York, I believe, where they chanted that that Black Lives Matter march. Uh, yeah, listen, this is obviously the a, there's nothing wrong with them painting what they're painting. They're on Fifth Avenue in front of the Trump Tower. That in and of itself is a good thing. You're just bringing more awareness to the movement and bringing more transparency in regard toward what should have been what should have been classified as one particular thing 
in and during the Civil War that never has been brought full circle. So what they're doing, painting, is not hurting nothing. That ain't hurting nothing and nobody. But now, if this guy is guilty of those things that what she's talking about, <clears throat> towards telling all these police officers to stand down, with all this looting and rioting and stuff that's going on, that reaches the level of terrorism. That That's not just uh, dereliction of duty. That, that man needs to be arrested. Because those business owners pay taxes to make sure that their storefronts is protected and taken care of. So, this is... This is unlike anything that I've ever seen, and even anything that I read about towards the uh, the civil rights movements back in the 60s and the 70s. The Brooklyn Bridge, yeah, this is obviously a petty, pathetic move by a failed mayor, but Judge, he's done real things. You know, I said that before. I, I don't want this to just be, you know, a, a rant by me. He's done real things that have cost people their lives. Black, Hispanic, and white residents of New York City disbanding the anti-crime unit. Judge, you realize most of the self-observed crime by police officers, where they see it, is not by uniformed police officers. Why? Because you don't commit a crime in front of a uniformed cop. You commit it in front of a guy in plain clothes because you don't know he's a cop. Then they stop it. They were the ones taking these people off the streets. They disbanded that. Years ago, they dismantled street crime. Now they're engaged in, they're doing this use of force guidelines where it's like you have to give a guy a massage before you can arrest him now. I mean, what, do you understand well, the use well, of now, force is determined but, but, by the bad guy? Yeah, sorry. Well, not only that, but my understanding is you'll never see a resisting arrest charge again in New York City, according to the cops that I've no. spoken with, because they're not going to fight with them to arrest them. They're going to basically say, you want to put your hands behind your back? If the guy says no, they're not going to chase him. They're not going to cuff him. The guy's going to get away. I mean, it's almost like an invitation to tea. You mind putting your hands behind your back? It's ridiculous. Let's talk about the fact right. that de Blasio's got just one and a half years left. Go ahead. Yeah, you're right. And I, if, if I may sarcastically um, correct you, just kind of joking, it's not that they're going to they're, they're not going to fight with them because they don't want they're not going to fight with them because they can't. The use of force guidelines they right. have out now are utterly absurd. Grab them by the wrist. You can only hold an arm. You're not allowed to use any kind of a body weight restraint. Do you ever have any idea how absurd I spent decades of my life? in control tactics and the Secret Service and the NYPD. When someone doesn't want to be arrested, I watched, I'm not kidding, I know we're short on time, I watched a 12-year-old girl in a Brooklyn hospital nearly take out two ESU cops, SWAT cops in New York, because she did not want to be taken, that's not a joke, and it was not a reflection on the cops. She did not want to be taken, she was a 12-year-old girl, they had to restrain her. Tell me how you're going to handle that with a 30-year-old, 220-pound uh, guy on drugs. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to massage <coughs> his neck and give him a head rub before you lock him up? Is the What planet does the Blasio live on? Why would a cop arrest anyone? Have a nice day, sir. You don't want to get arrested? Hard pass. Well, Take off. See you later. Here's the problem, Dan. Dan, the problem is that in light of all these new guidelines, they've done absolutely no, uh, no, no teaching. That None of them know what they're supposed to to do. They've had no training as to how they're supposed to effectuate an arrest under these new guidelines. That's why there's yeah. never be resisting arrest charge again in New York City because it's just going to say, he doesn't Judge. want to be arrested. I got to keep going. Yeah. L let me tell you something. You ever, see, you ever see the movie Black Hawk Down? There's a scene where the guy says, listen, when the bullets start flying, you can throw all your politics and, and he curses out the window. When the guy doesn't want to resist arrest and he's beating the snot out of you trying to get your gun, believe me, you can throw all of that crap out the window. I get it. Police officers, we should be able to handle ourselves. We should be trained. But let's make no mistake here. It's the bad guy that determines the use of force, not the cop. If a cop acts out and he does something he shouldn't do, there are CCRB complaints, and some of them will be put in jail, like the guy right. in the George Floyd case. But the bad guy determines the use of force, and when you're fighting for your life, you can throw all that fancy crap and training manuals, you can throw it right in the damn toilet bowl and flush it, because you're going to survive and yep. go home to your kids quickly, first. Quickly, and telling a cop to do all this crap quickly, is nonsense. Quick, yeah. Dan... He's got a year and a half left. What's going to happen? Yeah. Uh, what's going to happen is uh, New York is going to continue to descend into chaos. 
a lot of people can die in a year and a half and make some make no mistake this guy has blood on his hands and i don't say that lightly on national television he absolutely has blood on his hands there is no doubt about it all right dan bongino thanks so much for being with us much more tonight including an update on the st louis couple the mccluskeys who defended their home for protesters and next what does congressman matt gates think about the debate raging in his home state over reopening schools he's here live next the couple they're talking about that tried to defend their home uh they just got a warrant to go in and take away all their guns. I don't know the whole particulars about it, but it's it's really uh, it's really out there. I don't know if the guy had some sort of a, a warrant against his against him or if he had some sort of felony crime. I don't know. But uh, as far as I know he hadn't shot nobody. He just threatened to shoot somebody because they was threatening him. But to think that the DA uh, got a warrant to go in and take his guns, um, it's chaotic. Once more, these people around here didn't want peace. They didn't want to support the Windmill Ministries in its endeavors, pertaining to the opening of the seals, pertaining to the two witnesses, pertaining to uh, the trumpets. And, and as Christ said, that these would be all the beginnings of all the sorrows of the end time events that are unfolding and being unleashed out into society. Once more here at the Windmill Ministries, we can't emphasize it enough. Good luck to all of us and shalom.